the next practical is purification of ingham so as we have been discussing about amylase production of amylase earlier we have discussed screening for amylase producers then we discussed about the production of amylase enzyme and then we discussed about how to measure the activity of amylase enzyme let us continue that with purification of that amylase enzyme so in this practical we'll be taking amylase as an enzyme and the task will be or the aim will be to purify that amylase enzyme which is present in the crude fraction now before that let us repeat few things which we have already learned enzyme activity so enzyme activity is the amount of product form in micromoles per ml per minute that is enzyme activity and specific activity it is defined as the enzyme activity divided by protein concentration that means in the whole pre preparation of protein how much enzyme is present that is specific activity so as the enzyme gets purified its concentration in the given preparation it increases that means its specific activity in the given preparation it increases that means the protein contain in that given preparation and out of that protein contain there is highest amount of enzyme present in the given preparation that means specific activity it is a measure of enzyme purity so it increases during the purification of an enzyme and it becomes maximal and constant when the enzyme is pure so obviously when we go for the purification of enzyme the enzyme activity will increase uh, sorry the specific activity will increase and once the enzyme is obtained in pure form it will remain constant it will not increase that means your enzyme is purified this is a very beautiful diagram which is described in the book of leninger which uh, explains very well about the concept of specific activity now you can see here that there are two flasks which contain protein molecules these protein molecules are enzymes and some other types of protein so this is a mixture of proteins now this is the one flask which shows so many colored balls which represents the number of protein molecules and here you can see the number of protein molecules are less now if you read this legend of this figure that is activity versus specific activity the difference between these terms can be illustrated by considering these two flasks containing marble balls the flasks contain the same number of red marbles so the number of red marbles in this flask and in this flask are same so here you can see there are five red marbles and here also you can see there are five marbles but different numbers of marbles of other colors if the marbles represents proteins both flasks contain same activity of that enzyme that means the number of red balls are five here the number of red balls are five here that means the enzyme activity in this in this is same the concentration of that protein that is enzyme protein in this and in this it is same 
the sorry not concentration the quantity the quantity of that enzyme in this and in this is same that means the activity is same but if you compare the concentration concentration means it is a comparison of so among these many balls how many red balls are there among these many balls how many red balls are there so obviously if you see the concentration in the second flask it has more specific activity because the red marbles represent the higher fraction of total so as compared to total number of marbles red marbles are more and here in relation to the total number of marbles and if you compare that with red marbles the number of red marbles are very less this is called as specific activity now understanding specific activity is very important in order to understand the process of purification of enzyme in this case amylase so the source of protein is generally tissue or microbial cells we are already learned so in this practical we'll be using amylase preparation the amylase is produced and it is there in the supernatant the cells are separated and it is there in supernatant so the first step in enzyme purification is to break open the cell so this is in case of intracellular products now here in this case amylase enzyme is extracellular so there is no need to break open the cells so this preparation it will be called as crude extract now this crude extract is ready for the purification of desirable enzyme now uh, this is the theoretical part which we have already learned so in our case this this is the supernatant that is the crude extract so the very first thing is that we need to measure the volume of this fraction okay so the volume of the fraction it must be measured it may be 10 ml 20 ml 30 ml 100 ml 1000 ml whatever so we have to measure the volume here the next thing is that you need to measure the enzyme activity so we'll be assessing amylase activity so determine the amylase activity from this supernatant as well as determine what is the protein content of this supernatant so these three things you need to measure measure the volume determine the amylase activity and determine the protein content so the protein content as we have discussed it is determined by using pauling lowry method or barford assay method then this crude extract is ready for several treatments of purification so the now the next task is the separation of desirable proteins that means we are going to separate our amylase from other proteins this process is called as fractionation that means we are going to separate proteins into different fractions based on there are different properties so proteins have differences in their properties like they have different sizes charges so based on this we can separate these proteins into fractions the process is called as fractionation early fractionation steps in the purification it utilizes differences in protein solubility which is a complex function of ph temperature salt concentration and other factors so using these physico chemical properties of proteins enzymes we can separate different types of proteins so the first step in the purification is salt precipitation method so it is a usual practice 
that to use different salts to precipitate the proteins the solubility of proteins so we know that the proteins are soluble in aqueous solution so why they are soluble because they have hydrophilic groups on their amino acids so because of these hydrophilic groups proteins remain soluble in water whereas the hydrophobic parts hydrophobic r groups of amino acids they remain inside embedded in the protein and the hydrophilic groups are exposed out and therefore these hydrophilic groups makes hydrogen bonds with h delta h delta plus and delta minus which is contributed by hydrogen and oxygen atoms respectively now when we add salt so this is the strategy of making that particular protein insoluble in water and the strategy is to add slowly we have to add salt so the solubility of proteins it can be lowered and if it is lowered it will get precipitated so it can be lowered in the presence of some salts an effect called as salting out so the addition of certain salts in right amount can selectively precipitate some proteins because proteins will differ in relation to the composition of amino acids their concentration or the number of hydrophilic and hydrophobic amino acids will vary so these differences are very useful for their separation so some of the proteins will precipitate at particular salt concentration and some of them will remain in the solution so this makes possible their separation very commonly used salt is ammonium sulfate it is particularly effective and is often used to salt out proteins the proteins thus precipitated are removed from those remaining in the solution by low speed centrifugation now what happens when this ammonium sulfate is added into that water solution this ammonium sulfate it gets ionized plus and minus ion due to this it can interact very easily with delta plus and delta minus so so many water molecules will be engaged by this ammonium ions and sulfate ions and therefore this delta plus and delta minus it will remain of water molecule will remain associated with this salt and it will leave the proteins so there will be decrease in the interactions hydrophilic interactions between protein and water molecule if this interaction decreases the proteins will get precipitated it is called as salting out once these proteins are precipitated they can be separated by low speed centrifugation the supernatant is discarded and the precipitate is collected so this is how now this is the tube which is showing that ammonium sulfate is added slowly to this crude extract at a particular concentration so how much concentration is to be added that i will tell you uh, then after addition it is mixed and after mixing you can see that the precipitate is formed and that precipitate it is separated by centrifugation now there is a strategy for the addition of ammonium sulfate to precipitate protein into that crude fraction what is that strategy so you can see here that this is ammonium sulfate uh, 